Welcome. Our topic for today is the unconscious pathway, and this entails the spinocerebellar tracts. We've described the general sensory pathway as an ascending tract, and we said that they can be subdivided into two. That is the conscious tract and the unconscious tract. The conscious tract entails the dosal colomedial lemnisca pathway and the anterior lateral spinothalamic system. These are responsible for conscious sensation, sensation that we are aware of and we can perceive. And this sensation ends in the cerebral cortex. The second classification is the unconscious tract, and this is the spinocerebellar tract. These are sensory stimuli that we are unconscious of. They are sensed by the brain, or in this case, it is the cerebellum. Proprioception generally, we define it as a sensation of body movement in space. Proprioception can be divided into two, a conscious proprioception, which is carried by the dosa columedial lemniscal pathway, and the unconscious sensation that is carried by the spinocerebellar tract. Conscious tract versus the unconscious tract. The sensation of the body when the eyes is closed, we've used this illustration before now that we can touch our nose even while our eyes is closed. The change in position of our body is sent to the cerebral cortex and that is being interpreted. So we are able to guide so that we can directly touch our nose. A good illustration of the unconscious tract is uh, during the process of walking. During the process of walking, there is actually change in the length of our muscle and also sensation carried by the gogai tendon organ in the tendon during the process of movement. These are gathered up and they are sent to the cerebellum where it is being perceived. Even though we are not aware of these changes, they occur, but we are not aware of it. But these stimuli are still being generated and gathered up and they are being sent to the cerebellum for perception of these sensory stimuli. The cerebellum is able to sense it. This will then allow us to be able to move freely and also guide us through. So we can try and look for other illustration that involves conscious and unconscious tract, apart from the two that I have listed. Uh, so the spinocerebellar tract, we say that they carry unconscious proprioceptive uh, stimuli and they are being uh, generated in the muscle spindle. They can also be generated in the gogai tendon organ. Tendon basically are structures that connect the muscle to the bone. There is a proprioceptive receptor at that point that is able to sense the tension in the tendon. And these are also be gathered up and sent to the cerebellum. Even though we are not aware of this activity, they send it to the cerebellum. They can also come from the joint capsule. Impulses or stimuli are all being gathered together and they are being sent to the cerebellum. In the central nervous system, this is the cerebral hemisphere. This is the midbrain, the pons. Then below that, we have the medulla. Then the medulla, of course, we know become continuous as the spinal cord. Then behind the midbrain, the pons and the medulla is where we have the cerebellum. So this is the cerebellum behind. This is known for its function in coordination and balancing because they are able to gather information from the muscle spindle, the gogai tendon organ, and also joint capsule that are seen around the skeletal framework of the body, they gather it together. Even though we are not conscious of this, we are not aware of it, they are gathered and they are sent to the cerebellum for coordination and balance. Because we have the cerebellum behind, and this is the brain stem, there's what we call the cerebellar peduncle. The cerebellar peduncles are fibers or tracts. So they are subdivided into three. We have the superior cerebellar peduncle, we have the middle cerebellar peduncle, and we have the inferior cerebellar peduncle. This is the midbrain. This is the pons and this is the medulla. So the superior cerebellar peduncle connects the cerebellum with the midbrain, while the middle cerebellar peduncle connects the pons with the cerebellum. And lastly, the inferior cerebellar peduncle connects the medulla with the cerebellum. The way the spinocerebellar tract works is that as soon as the impulses are generated from the outside, because they are located outside the central nervous system. So outside it, the peripheral nervous system is where we have the muscle, the gogai tendon organ, and also joint capsule. 
So the information are gathered around that area and they are sent to the spinal cord. When they get to the spinal cord, a lot of events happen depending on the region of the body where this information is coming from. So they gather up in the spinal cord, they are sent upward. They can either terminate in the medulla or terminate in the midbrain where they now connect to the cerebellum. They do not just connect from the spinal cord directly to the cerebellum. What they do is that those stimuli are relayed upward to the brainstem. So it is within the region of the brainstem. They will now be relayed to the cerebellum. The spinocerebellar tract is composed of four different types of tracts. The first one is the posterior spinocerebellar tract. Then we have the anterior spinocerebellar tract, followed by the corneal cerebellar tract. Then the last one is the rostral spinocerebellar tract. We would be looking at this tract one after the other. So the posterior or the dosal spinocerebellar tract is also called the flanking fasciculus or the flanking tract. They are made up of two sets of neurons. So they have the first order neuron and the second order neuron. So let's see how the path runs. And we know that this, of course, carries unconscious proprioception. They carry unconscious proprioception from, from C8 level to L2. That means the trunk region. This is the muscle spindle, and this is the tendon that connects muscle to bone at both ends. So we have the GTO, which is the Gogai tendon organ, are located within the tendon. They are like receptors. And they, what they do is that they are able to sense tension in the tendon. So when there is movement, of course, there will be tension. There will be the generation of tension, which will be sensed by the receptor. And this receptor will gather the information and they will begin to process it down to the cerebellum so that coordination and balancing can be achieved. In the posterior spinal cerebellar tract, the first other neuron will move from the Goga tendon organ and the muscle spindle, also joint capsule, depending on the situation at hand. So they gather the unconscious proprioceptive stimuli. This runs and they enter into the dosal root ganglion. This is the dosal root ganglion. The dosal root ganglion are made up of pseudo unipolar neurons. So they have their cell body in the ganglion. They have two division network of axons running from this region and this region. After they pass through the dosal root ganglion, they enter into the dosal gray on. We've studied the configuration of the spinal cord. Now we should know where the dosal gray on is. This is the ventral gray on, and this is the lateral gray on. So they enter through the posterior gray on, and it is in the posterior gray on, there is a specific nucleus there, which is called the Clark's nucleus. It is in the Clark nucleus that they now synapse with the second order neuron. From this point, the second order neuron picks it up and they enter into the lateral white column. This is the lateral column, this is the dosal column, and this is the ventral column. It is the white matter region of the spinal cord. It is good for us to note that as soon as they synapse in the Clark's nucleus, they enter into the posterior part of the lateral column before they now ascend up ipsolaterally. They do not deposite, they do not cross to the contralateral side. They maintain their path along the same side and they ascend up to enter into the inferior cerebellar peduncle. Remember, we talked about this peduncle in our previous slides, that the inferior cerebellar peduncle connects the medulla with the cerebellum. These are the cerebellum behind, and this is the midbrain. So they go and they enter into the inferior cerebellar peduncle. From there, they now terminate on the cerebellum, where the perception will be felt. So you can see how they move. They are just made up of two neurons, and they run on the same side. It is also good for us to know the dosal medial cerebellar tract. This tract is formed by the second order neuron. Remember we said that there's a synapse in the Clark nucleus. The second order neuron picks it up. They enter into the lateral white matter and they ascend up. As they ascend up, they form a collection of tract around this region. This is called the dosal medial cerebellar tract. So this tract is actually formed by the second order neuron of the dosal spinal cerebellar tract. 
The second subset of the spinocerebellar tract is the anterior spinocerebellar tract. This is also referred to as the goas colon, and it receives sensation from the lower part of the body. They are also made up of two sets of neurons, just like the posterior spinocerebellar tract. So the first set of neurons carry unconscious proprioception from the muscle or the tendon. They collect it at this point and they pass through the dosal root ganglion, just like the posterior spinal cerebellar tract. They enter through the posterior gray on and the synapse at this point. Then the second order neuron then picks it up from here and they run to the contralateral side and enter into the lateral white matter. This is the lateral white matter, this is the dosa, and this is the ventra. So they enter through the lateral white matter, but at the anterior end. And that is why they named the anterior spinal cerebellar tract. The posterior spinal cerebellar tract, when they enter into the lateral white matter, they enter at the posterior end. And that is why they attacked the posterior spinal cerebellar tract. But in this case, for the anterior spinal cerebellar tract, they enter through the anterior part of the lateral white matter. And this is where they enter through it. So from this region, they then ascend upward passing through the medulla, the pons, when they get to the midbrain, they run through the superior cerebellar peduncle. Remember we said that the superior cerebellar peduncle connects the midbrain to the cerebellum. This is the cerebellum on both sides. This is the left side of the cerebellum. This is the right side of the cerebellum. So they, when they pass through the superior cerebellar peduncle, they then cross again behind this structure to then terminate on the cerebellum on the other side. So you can see that in this case, crossing is at two points. They cross at the level of the spinal cord at this region. They get to the junction between the midbrain and the cerebellum. They also cross again. You can see that this anterior spinal cerebellar tract is very dramatic, crossing at two points. It crosses at the spinal cord level. It then crosses also at the cerebellum level. And remember when we discussed the posterior spinal cerebellar tract in our previous slide, we said that there is a formation of the dosa media cerebellar tract on this other side. Also in the anterior spinal cerebellar tract, we also have the ventral media cerebellar tract. And this is a collection of hexon or tracts that is formed by the second order neuron. So when they decussate, they ascend upwards. There's a collection point at this point, and this is the ventral medial cerebellar tract. The cornea cerebellar tract also is made up of two other neurons. They gather stimuli or sensation from the muscle and also the tendon, and they pass through the dosal root ganglion. From the dosal root ganglion, they enter into the posterior horn or the dosal gray horn, and they ascend upward. When they get to the medulla, there is a nucleus that is called the accessory corneate nucleus. The synapse in this nucleus, the stimuli is then taken up by the second order neuron that passes through the inferior cerebellar peduncle, then are being terminated on the cerebellum. The last subdivision is the rostral spinal cerebellar tract, and this carries unconscious proprioceptive information or stimuli from C1 to C8. The stimuli are generated, they are collected, and they pass through the dosal root ganglion. The synapse with the second order neurons whose cell body resides in the dosal horn. From there, the second other neuron picks it up and crosses to the other side. After crossing to the other side, they then ascend. They ascend, they get to the medulla, to the inferior olivary nucleus, where they cross again to the other side. You can see that this also exhibits two crossing patterns, one in the region of the spinal cord, then the other one around the medulla. So there are fibers cross to the other side and they enter through the inferior cerebellar peduncle before they now terminate. This is a very short task that we can go through. With the head of diagram, describe the four subdivisions of the spinal cerebellar tracts. Also give other sample illustrations of the conscious proprioception and also the unconscious proprioception. I've tried to give to you, try and think of some other illustration on your own for a better understanding. So thank you for watching. I'll be expecting questions in the comment section.